Hey guys and welcome to the second video in this video series. In this video we will look at what are actually CI-CD pipelines. Okay, so before moving towards CI-CD pipeline, let's take a typical example. So let's say I am creating a Java based web application. So what are all the things that I'll need is, I'll need a Eclipse IDE, I'll code the Java application in it, I'll write the JSP or the servlets, anything that is based upon the product requirements, I'll write all my code there and I'll install a local Tomcat server on my machine and when in the Eclipse I'll just say hey run please run it as a server in, in the server in this particular Tomcat server the Eclipse will go ahead and host the web application on the local host and in the browser we can go to that particular local host and the mentioned port number and we can access the whole application that we have actually designed. So now let's talk about how these things typically happen in an enterprise application. Now the first thing is in the way where we, are, we were creating the file the project on Eclipse as a single user this doesn't happen in enterprises right. So maybe there are lots of developers there's a whole team that is working on a project and let's say you have a code repository all your developers have the access to those codes and each of the developer is responsible for writing let's say some kind of module and when all the modules are completed the branches are merged the code that is written by different developers that is merged and a, fi that a final build is made out of that particular uh, source code now when I say the build is made uh, I actually mean that the code is being compiled so let's say when I was coding on my single machine there was some kind of dependency that I used I imported some kind of library for my usage and for an example let's say I downloaded the HTTP client library to make HTTP requests. So I usually downloaded the jar file, installed it in my Eclipse, configured the path and did everything and then I was ready to use that particular library. But now when our code is committed for the master branch our source code repository is not knowing that which particular jar file have you installed in the in your local Eclipse project. So what is actually done is you write all your dependencies somewhere that hey my project uses these particular libraries and then you use a dependency manager for example if you are on Node.js you are using npm for Java you are using Maven for if you are using something on Python you can use pip and with all these things you try to import all the dependencies that are required to successfully compile or build your project okay so when we talk about uh, this th this was the thing that was related to when a single per person is coding and when the things are being going on in a whole team so when every developer is working on the code so now if we get a little bit into nitty gritty details so let's say this is the infrastructure part we'll we'll talk about this left part uh, afterwards let's take this uh, right part first so what actually happens is let's say all your developers committed the code the final code is merged and your master branch is uh, committed now you have already written some kind of code that whenever there is a commit on the master branch it automatically takes out and makes a build out of it that means an executable file out of that particular source code now who does this all these tasks I will get to it later but very very simply put once the master branch code is committed we our build initiate our build is made or the final executable executable has been made and once the executable has been made it has be it it needs to be deployed upon the server so this is the kind of automation that a CICD provides you the first two provides the CI part that is called as the continuous integration that means whenever the, your code is being committed you can set up some of the hooks and you can perform post build automation tasks or pre build automation tasks and make a final executable and use that particular executable to deploy it on the server if you do it the whole process in an automated fashion then these first two part makes the CI pipeline and these two makes it the CD 
the first two means the continuous integration and the next two means the continuous deployment or the continuous delivery now the only simple difference between continuous delivery and a continuous deployment is if you are taking your final executable file and you are taking a manual intervention whether to approve that build or not now this comes under the continuous delivery part and if you are automating in such a fashion that you are not requiring any of the manual intervention in approving the build then it is called as the continuous deployment so ci cd pipeline makes sure that the developer and the product team is concentrated upon writing the quality code and the operation teams has already built the this kind of pipeline that whenever they want to make a build out of it they can easily make a build and deploy it on the server using the ci cd pipeline now this was in the case of product right now similarly we can have the infrastructure part as well now let's say i create the operating system on which my product teams deploy their product on so to make sure that the operating system that i am providing or the base image that i am providing is vulnerability free so to make sure we have different uh, ci cd pipeline for creating the base images where let's say we take a base image let's say ubuntu and uh, in the build path we removed all the unnecessary packages uh, did some of the tweaking with the hardenings of linux systems and any of the thing that is required to properly to properly make the system well for the further utilization and once that is done we let's say store our final build image on some kind of artifact tree where this particular operating system or this particular image can be used by the product team to deploy their product upon that particular image so we can broadly divide it into two parts the first one is the infrastructure and the second one is the product so each of the ci cd pipelines uh, work in almost similar fashion but there are some kind of different activities involved so when we will get into the practical all these things will definitely become clear okay so we'll have this much only for this video and in the next video we'll take these particular theoretical things that we learn and we'll get to know into deeper aspects of how these things are being achieved and how actually devops works so once we have a fair idea about what are the things what are the processes that are involved in the devops then it's easy for us to integrate the security in the devops pipeline so thanks for watching this video and in the next video we will look more about the devsecops things or the Dev devops tools so thank you for watching this video and stay tuned have a great day